Welcome to the Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner, where each month we bring you a new fly pattern to give a try to on our Central Oregon lakes and rivers. In addition to showing you how to tie each pattern, I'll feature fishing technique tips and tricks, and I'll cover some of the entomology behind each pattern to help gain a better understanding of the bugs that we're trying to imitate. I have field tested each of the patterns that I feature each month to make sure that they catch fish. I'll cover tying instructions for the fly as well as materials to help you be able to recreate these patterns on your own vise. For this month's pattern, I'm going to tie a glass bead black assassin. The uh, assassin fly was invented by Tom Lowe and it's really an adaptation of Cal Bird's bird's nest pattern. Um, in this case, Tom uses this fly in a lot of our still waters with excellent results. So we're going to learn how to tie a glass bead black assassin. Before we get started, let me cover the materials that we're going to be using briefly on this pattern. I'll cover them in more detail as we tie the fly. So let's get started tying the glass bead assassin pattern. Um, as we get started, let me introduce the first couple materials. For a hook, I'm going to use a fire hole 609 size 14 to 18. This is a competition barbless hook and it is um, a standard length with a medium wire. For the bead, I'm using a glass seed bead. This is something I get at a craft store, and it's in gunmetal uh, for a color. Now, you can weight your fly depending on how you're planning to fish it. The glass seed bead helps this fly sink very slowly to imitate the natural. You can also add a little non-toxic wire, or you can put a heavier bead, just depending on your own personal preference. For thread, I'm using an Ultra 140 denier in black. For the tail, I'm using a Whiting Brahma Hen in black. And I like this for the nice wispy nature of the Brahma Hen um, fibers on each feather that helps uh, with movement of this fly in the water. So let's get started tying. I've wrapped my thread on the hook uh, right behind the glass bead and the first step I'm going to go ahead and attach the tail. So I've stripped off a number of barbs, about a small clump of barbs off my Brahma hen and I'm going to tie those on right behind the bead and finish up at the tail set position. For the rib, I'm using ultra wire in small red. And I'll immediately follow that up by tying in my rib um, and reserving that for ribbing the abdomen of this fly. For the abdomen and thorax, I'm using a dubbing blend that I, I put together. I'm using Cascade Crest Tools Euro Seal in black. It's a seal fur substitute. And then I'm using Arizona Semi Seal, and that's in Canadian black. And I blend about 75% of the Euro Seal with 25% of the Semi Seal to give it life and color to help imitate some of the naturals in our still waters. So I'm going to take my dubbing mix and pinch just a few fibers onto the thread and then I'm going to rotate um, that dubbing mix around the thread to create a yarn or dubbing noodle and I'll spin that relatively tight for the abdomen of this fly and wind that forward hanging on to that spun fur 
all the way up to the end of the thorax area or the area where I want to place the wing. And I'll follow on by wrapping four or five wraps of my ribbing wire up to that same end of the abdomen location. For the hackle on this pattern, I'm using a whiting Coque de Leon pin in a mottled gray. Now these are the wing uh, feathers are off the, uh, the wing pad. So I've stripped off about a half inch of the barbs off uh, one of the longer um, feathers. And I'm going to take and fold those kind of over the top of the hook and use my thumb and forefinger to press those all the way around the fly. And I'll follow that up with a soft wrap on my thread to kind of spin it almost like spinning hair. And um, then we'll go ahead and uh, tighten up that wrap and finish up with several wraps over the butts. The final step in this pattern is to go ahead and wind some additional dubbing that we're going to wrap right behind the uh, bead and fill in that area that we left in front of the hackle. And so we'll wind several wraps and go ahead and whip finish off this fly and do a little cleanup. Some of the materials I'm using are rather brushy and uh, I like to clean it up just a touch. A bird's nest is supposed to be rather brushy but not messy. So let me finish by rotating the fly around so you can see all sides of the glass bead black assassin. So that has been your Sun River Angler's Fly Time Corner for this month. I hope you'll give the glass bead Black Assassin a try. This has been a really good fly on Crane Prairie uh, throughout this summer. I oftentimes fish this in tandem with a um, black leech, uh, black balance leech, and use this as the dropper fly and I take an awful lot of fish on this pattern. If you like what you see, please subscribe to this channel and follow us on Facebook. Thanks for watching.